everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here. Welcome to Advantage One RV today. This is where we sell RVs on behalf of their owners, but we can still do trades and financing and hitching and all that normal stuff. And I tell you, one of the best lessons I've learned as I've aged is to, to, to keep an open mind. And I say that because this RV surprised me in a very pleasant way. Now, it certainly helps the previous owners took very good care of it. There's a bunch of accessories that they left behind on this. They just decided to downsize and they just didn't need all the big space and stuff. If I had to guess, it's a big bunkhouse with a private slide in the back. The kids probably grew up and they just didn't need all the space anymore. It's probably just the one or two of them now. But what I'm getting at is this is a brand that historically, uh, as Schneid Twain would say, it don't impress me much. But, but, I kept an open mind. And there's been a couple instances this past year where some brands that previously I felt were not quite up to snuff have been really showing me stuff and really surprising me. And this is one of those. It's a simple, straightforward, no-nonsense bunkhouse. It's an infantry soldier level product, if you will. But frankly, it's very nicely executed. There's some very nice details, say around the entertainment center, in the kitchen, in the bunk room. I really like, they did some very nice stuff here. I could see myself camping in this for sure. Now this thing's definitely big. Um, and you know, it's not camping in the, in the sense of like tent camping on the ground, but it's also not glamping in the sense of electric space heating fireplaces and ceiling fans. And there's nothing wrong with that kind of glamping. That's just not what this is. Frankly, this is, this really speaks to me. I like something that is understated. It's, it's calm, it's quiet, it's warm and welcoming. And that's exactly what I see here. I like how light and bright it is uh, in, in terms of like the open sense of space. One of the only, I guess you call it glitches or defects or whatever I've noticed, is there is a little crack on that skylight right there. Now, thankfully, those are dual layer. And, uh, you know, there's little seals or seams or tapes or something you could put on that to kind of tape it up right there. But that's like the worst I've been able to find. There's actually a lot of really nice things going on here. Like if we start opening up this kitchen, I love that kitchen garbage drawer right there. That, it, you hear me harp all the time about why don't these RVs have places for waste baskets. This one has one built in. Now, um, that is a uh, six cubic foot gas electric two-way fridge over here in the hallway. We see this could either be pantry, clothing, storage, beach towels, uh, you know, overflow kitchen drawer space, as it were. Now, down below that extra long dinette, that's at least a seven foot dinette. You see, uh, you know, storage compartments there. But if you watch my videos regularly, you know how I'm always harping about. If I got this trailer, the first thing I would do is swap out the pedestal dinette mounts and get a set of free floating table legs. Well, that's exactly what you had over here. And I love it because that means that you can twist and shout the table. You can move it outside for picnic time if you need to. You can also slide it to the right and, uh, you know, everybody clap your hands and have a little Dinofa action. Now, little things like a porcelain uh, foot flush stool right there, that is actually, in a sense, really a callback to Heartland's uh, ancestry, the producer of this RV. Heartland really got its start by beginning with some bigger high-end fifth wheels like Bighorn and Landmark and, and things like that. They didn't get into the stick and tin travel trailer market until later. Well, when they did, they were already using things like nice porcelain foot flush stools and they kind of decided, why, why stop doing that? Isn't this what we should always just keep doing? Um, and interesting note also, as long as we're talking RV history, before this was called the uh, Prowler, these were actually called uh, the North Country. And it's actually uh, a thing that they carry just down the street for a little bit. And just to show you here, I'm about 6'3". You can see that my head does not need to be in the skylight. This is one of the nice benefits of a 6'9 ceiling. You're going to have to be 6'3 or 6'4 or taller before you really got to ever start worrying about putting your head up in the bubble. Now, for reference, the bathroom was on our left over there. There's a sliding pocket privacy door to get us back into the rear. Uh, I, I think by default, we're going to call it a bunk room because I think we just call this camper a bunkhouse. But as you see, you can kind of use that like an open lounge sofa. There's nothing below that. It's just storage, which can leave you some 
uh, conversion options if you wanted to modify this floor plan, if you wanted to change that seating up or sleeping up as it were. Now over here above the camp kitchen, you've got yourself what I call big kid bunk. Uh, it's a little bit wider. Actually, it's the same size as the lower bunk that we just saw just for reference here. And this is kind of what I'm saying. On a rainy day, this is more than just a bunkhouse. Like you got the uh, entertainment center over here and you notice how it has a built-in ladder so you don't have to throw the kids into the uh, upper bed and throw out your shoulder. But notice how there's storage behind that ladder dedicated and hanging closet space in a bunk room, which is like virtually unheard of. Some extra dresser space down here. Anybody with kids knows they occupy so much space. Um, both of the, well, actually there's another uh, window above the flip up bunk that I have over here. The window's open for airflow. Plus we have a vent up top here. And something I wanna show you, log this in the back of your memory banks. Notice how these walls are not water damaged. When we get up onto the roof, I'm going to point out where there's been some resealing done. I'm pointing this out right here just to kind of showcase the fact that it was obviously not due to a leak. They were doing preventative care and maintenance like you're supposed to. And that rear room and this big living room, you got the super slide, the taller ceiling, the windows, the skylight, all giving you a greater sense of space so that we are, uh, you know, if the weatherman gets it wrong and we are stuck inside for an extended period of time, we're not going total cabin stir crazy and driving one another nuts, you know. Um, that, that extra space is, is really a godsend sometimes. Now, it occurs to me when we were looking at all the kitchen storage, what we didn't look at here is the uh, entertainment center. Now, you notice, too, just like the bunker room, you have sliding pocket privacy doors there, and that TV can spin around. Notice, too, just little TLC things the folks put in. Just that little, uh, I, I tell you what, command strips and pool noodles are like <laughs> the two best things that ever happen, uh, ha happen, happen to our being, there we go, in a long time. Now, quick note for you, I like these wide open side stands, but this is a camp queen, so you're gonna wanna kinda take that into account. You could maybe shove a true queen in here, but it's gonna, I bet the mattress is going to kinda bend and fold a little bit as a result. And just like we saw in the uh, bunk room, when we get up to the roof, you'll see where there's been some resealing done of the front termination strip as well. But just like back there, this is all solid and I have not detected any leaks or water damage in here. Now with the slides closed in road mode, you might notice it gets awful tight in that hallway right there. Obviously, sitting like this, unless you are one heck of a skinny mini, uh, I don't know that you're going to slide through there, although we can get to the kitchen and stuff, so if you have some sandwiches or something packed, you're good. But remember, this is a rack and pinion slide out. One of the benefits of those uh, is that you can deploy them partially without screwing them up. Now, you should not be doing the hacksaw, Jim Duggan foot stomps in the slide floor or anything like that, but if you needed to partially slide that just enough to slide your way back here, this slide allows you to do that. It would, if we do that, allow you to open that bathroom door. I don't know that you're going to need to, however, because remember, this does have a direct entry door from the bathroom uh, accessible from the outside. And one of the first things, actually, that gave me the really good vibes on this is just the, the good look of the exterior. The skin isn't faded. The decals aren't flaky. The, uh, the propane covers had a little bit of sun kissing. Uh, you know, a little star kiss, sun kissed action going on over here, but... That's that's not the previous owner's fault. That's just uh, the uh, shroud itself didn't have a lot of UV inhibitor. But up here, you've got a large front pass-through. And look at this. It is just, it's packed full of goodness. There's all kinds of stuff going on in here. We've got surge guards. We've got wheel chocks. We've got leveling blocks. And whatever you see in here is what you get. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Power stabilizer jacks and power awning. So all four corners are push button easy. Tongue is push button easy. And of course the awning itself is push button easy. We got some speakers up top there near the awning between the two doors. And as we roll our way down here, tires look good by the way. There, I, I don't see anything wacky going on. Remember we have that direct entry bathroom door, uh, which the, sometimes people go, why is there a door to the bathroom? because it will cut down on foot traffic in the RV just dramatically and keep the dirt uh, and just the noise in the RV down to a minimum. Plus, remember, you can deadbolt that door. But out here, we have a full-size camp kitchen, which I swear are becoming harder and harder to find. 
some good storage out here. If you look under that taller cabinet, you see uh, TV hookups. So you can have some outdoor entertainment going on. It's a real sink with a real drain, not a dog dish that you're going to flip on the ground and seasonal lady next door is going to be like, you're not supposed to flip water on the ground. Whoa! I, uh, I maybe met seasonal lady once when I was a little younger. I'm not going to lie. When I was younger, I was a little more brash and uh, I responded poorly and she wasn't wrong. You're not supposed to flip water on the ground. I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing, but hey, what are you going to, what are you going to do? You live and you learn, right? A uh, little outside utility shower on the back of this thing here too. Um, the uh, Let me get you down to the underbelly actually, and then we're going to zip up top. Underbelly of this, you can see, uh, fully enclosed the length of the trailer, and I believe forced air heated, but apologies, that is one of those little fine detail aspects on a Prowler of which I'm not intimately aware. If somebody can lend me a hand in the comments section to verify whether it is or is not heated, that would be awesome. Now, when I climbed up here, first thing I noticed right away coming up that ladder is there's been some resealing done. So, naturally, my uh-oh alarms start going off. So, I got over here and very carefully, because I'm near the edge, started toe tapping. That is solid as a Bob Seger rock. So, it looks like this is a case, and I see several instances of it up here, like around that skylight, of preventative upkeep. They weren't fixing a leak. They were preventing the leaks from starting. And ladies and gentlemen... An ounce of prevention, well, that's worth a pound of cure. I like what they did up here, though. This is um, seam tape, like a turnabond-style tape. This stuff is, this is legitness right here. Um, <laughs> when you put it down, you better be ready to leave it there till death do you part, because it is not easy for that stuff to come up. Now, obviously, it's a big bunkhouse. That's, you know, it's default format. But it, there's, there's, like, nothing under that rear bunk in the back. That's just, like, a storage chest. This would not be a hard one to modify if you were looking for an office or if you wanted to put a sofa back there instead of that fixed bunk. This is this is a, a very good piece as it sits here, but it's also one that I think could be very flexible very easily for a lot of people. So keep, like I said, just like I did when I walked into this RV, keep an open mind. You never know what you might see when you allow yourself. Good lesson to learn there, I think, whether it's camping or anything. <laughs> Thank you for joining my TED Talk. This has been Life Lessons from your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd. With that, I'm going to wrap this up because uh, as my nephews have learned, Uncle Josh's advice <laughs> ain't always, ain't always uh, you know, going to keep you out of trouble. But a little trouble is not a bad thing sometimes. Good life experiences there. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.